Uh, my name is Phil Haynes and I'm a past FIBA and IWBF referee. Uh, my family was heavily involved in basketball when I was younger, so I was always around a basketball stadium. And around the age of 12, I decided that I wanted to start refereeing. So as part of the SA Church Basketball Association, I it was just like a, a little action day. You went and listened to a couple of people talk talk about the rules of basketball and, and some mechanics and then you did a little exam and after that you're given a, a little cardboard card which they stuck a photo of you on the back of and and you're ready to go and there was no shadowing or or green shirt program that we we have these days but I was uh, straight into under 14 and under 16 church basketball and haven't looked back since and loved every minute of it. I'll go next I'm Jason Kelly I'm a WNBL referee um, I started refereeing for three reasons. Um, my mum used to umpire netball. My brother was an AFL boundary umpire, only at local level. And anyway, we were in the car ride on the way home from a game. My team had lost and I went, you know, bloody referees, something along those lines. <laughs> As a up and about 13 year old and my mum said, what, you think you can do better? So me being me, turned around and said, of course I can. And um, a couple of my other friends at basketball decided they were going to do the ref course. And it was a way of also earning a little bit of pocket money and being able to hang out at basketball. So, yes, when I started, no green shirt. It was just a matter of get out in the court after doing the course and uh, have some fun. And found out that I was never going to be a player. And um, why not be a ref? I still get to be involved. Okay, I'll go. Hi, I'm uh, Carolyn Zakos. I'm a very, very now former uh, referee. I uh, refereed internationally, um, loved refereeing in the WNBL and the NBL. I've had huge amounts of experiences thanks to basketball. Um, I started refereeing because I was late to training. So I had to go to a referee course and uh, I didn't look back. I managed to pick up games and earn some money um, earning some pocket money. So I was 14, 15, so it was good money to earn. And there were opportunities that came towards me. I met some fabulous people and one thing just kept leading to another. So it was, yeah, by chance. that so I was late to training, which is not recommended. But anyway, that's what it was. Uh, I'm Jackie. Um, so I had my first year in the WNBL um, as a panel, panel member on the season just been. Um, I have a different experience with the, the learning of refing. I think I came in at a time when we did a bit of shadowing. Um, but mine started based off my parents running uh, Gold Coast basketball and a basketball family are there all the time um, and got kind of lured in with the thought of some money to buy some lollies on the weekend with your best mate. Um, I then ref for a few years and then took a seven year gap um, to move to Townsville and try to pursue a playing career. Um, I was a really good bench warmer um, in state league. So that probably said a lot for my WNBL ambitions. <laughs> um, and then a few injuries kind of led me to not even be able to play um, QBL in Queensland. So then um, that same year, I kind of went to our local comp in Townsville and just said, hey, I'm keen to jump back on the court. Um, and that was four and a half, five years ago. And it's kind of accelerated since then. And I haven't looked back. I've found the, the passion I had as a kid now as a referee. Um, and found that love for the game again. And, and you both. So they, these days they have a Basketball Australia have developed a green shirt program, which is run in each state. And that's for people that haven't refereed basketball before. So they come in and, and watch or, you know, listen to a, a facilitator talk about basketball and, and run through some some PowerPoint points with them and about the rules and some just very generic stuff to help get them started. And uh, then they do a, an online assessment. So just basically on the, on the rules of the game, which then they, they come out to a domestic competition and they can either shadow if they're not quite, quite confident of stepping out on the court first up, but they can shadow someone and have a, a mentor help them you know, with their positioning on the court and that sort of thing until they're comfortable enough to have a go at a, at a game. And, you know, I think it's a program that we can certainly build build upon across Australia and 
especially, you know, with new businesses coming in, which are helping to develop referees like uh, JD8. And uh, thanks, Phil. <laughs> no but uh, no, look, there's, there's a lot of passionate people around the country that are, are looking to educate referees. And I think it can only improve from where we are now. And I think something that builds onto that, as you say, Phil, about the mentoring or the shadowing aspect is the, the people that normally are the mentors or the people who are helping educate the new referees come in are people who actually care about referees. And they're the people that have been around the game for a while. Uh, I know even with my local association, which is in Werribee, Victoria, um, a lot of the guys that referee Big V in the State League or the VJBL will come back and be mentors for the little green shirt referees. Um, I Even myself, I get on the floor and hopefully don't teach them too many bad habits about walking to the wrong places and all that sort of thing. But that mentorship is, is a really big thing that we need to capitalise on. Um, the Green Shirt program is also another good program where it's that safety net that when a referee doesn't have to move out of the Green Shirt program into a black and white or a grey shirt until they're ready, until they're comfortable. And I believe that's something that uh, we need to keep, keep building on throughout um, Australia to make sure that it's a safe environment for people to want to officiate and having good mentors or having the green shirt to identify, hey, I'm in a green shirt, I'm having a go, let me, let me try and do the best I can do. So I think that's something that we need to continue to do. And most associations have uh, different forms of how they mentor people, um, where they, they, they will put people out on the floor for, for a few weeks and they bring them back into the classroom and start talking to one another about what you're experiencing. Everybody's in the same boat where you've got to do your, you can't get experience unless you do one game. So once you do one game, then you can build on it and build on it. I think, I think protecting our young referees is a real key to give them a chance to get out there and learn. They will make mistakes. There's no one's ever perfect straight up, but. I think going off what you were saying, around protecting the kids we put the the guys in a green shirt we are well in Queensland we allow them from 12 years of age and that's quite a, a young and vulnerable age to allow um, kids into an environment where you're, you're under 12s or your 14s coaches are generally 30 years at least um, trying to teach those kids how to play basketball so I think it's really important like you were saying to have that support network for the referees I think the BA Green Shirt program is a really um, large step forward in that. And then it's up to the associations too to have supervisors and educators in place that will kind of be the, the punching bag to an extent to protect those young kids. So then we do retain referees long term. I think that's that 12 to 16 age group is where we lose a lot of referees due to the um, mm. emotional environment that they're out there doing what they're trying to get some pocket money, but it turns out to be quite a stressful uh, task for them. So that support network is definitely a really key thing. And that's a, that's a really important point you make, Jack, is that uh, associations and competitions need to realise that they can help create the environment, whether it's talking to their domestic clubs or talking to their domestic coaches, depending on how they uh, arrange their competition, that, hey, just like those players who are learning how to play the game at under 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s, or the parent who's learning how to score, or the other parent who is just learning how to coach because the normal coach didn't turn up, referees are the same. That it's the, the grassroots environment has to be the education environment. And by whether it's the local referee program working with the local association or the local domestic clubs to say, hey, we're all learning here. Um, it's easier said than done, but that's a, a really good point that you made, Jackie, that it's it's got to be everybody that does it. It can't just be the referee program, us against them. It has to be everyone working together. Well, I think, I think associations are starting to realise that everything is actually mutually inclusive. Mm. You know, if you want your coaching and your players to improve, you need your referees to improve. You know, for your referees to improve, you need your, your coaches and your players to improve. And I think people are starting to, under, you know, we got away from that for a while and people are starting to, to you know, bring that back into the fold that if we all work together, it's only going to benefit basketball as a whole. I think the amount of referee development managers you have at association level now is a reflection of what you're saying, Phil, is that everyone's trying to buy in from all 
parties of the game, so then it's improving um, in general, which is great.